Um, and we can see this pathological response to um, kind of the, the changes that people are so fearful of uh, in the conservative uh, right-wing movements. Um, white Americans and the racially coded signs of Tea Party uh, rallies. You see one here, uh, Obama's plan, white slavery. Um, the belligerent white rage at healthcare town hall meetings and the not so subtle right wing talk show host pundits um, such as Rush Limbaugh who last week uh, came out very uh, unapologetically calling for a return of racially segregated buses in America. Um, so today's America both ideologically and more so institutionally, which I'm going to focus on today, uh, couldn't be further from post-racial. Um, and so what, are we, what we are witnessing today uh, in terms of the economic crisis is a heavily racialized and gendered issue today. Okay, so um, let's look at uh, some of the issues going on first with uh, race, and of course uh, we're going to get to how race intersects with gender in a minute. Um, first and foremost, as sociologists, we look at race as an important indicator of social class. Okay, but we can't talk about capitalism without talking about other forms of inequality and how those forms of inequality are integrated within the system of capitalism to further exploit workers, okay, to further divide working class. Um, so there is an immense and rapidly accelerating wealth gap in America like we just heard. Um, 40 million people are currently in poverty. This is the highest level since 1960. Okay. Um, in California, 78% of the adjusted gross income, the AGI, of uh, California uh, taxpayers belong to the wealthiest 20%. In California, and of that wealthy 20%, one fifth, 30% uh, of this group went to the top 1%. Okay, so we have an extremely skewed class system that is polarized not only by a colorblind analysis of economics, but we see racial implications here as well. Um, also, in 2008, poverty reached 13.2% um, uh, of the total population for the United States, um, which is the highest in 11 years. But a lot of times, when we look at statistics, we um, get more accurate reads when we're more specific. Um, and so when we look at, for example, um, the, the average black poverty rate, African-American poverty rate, we see that it's nearly double the white poverty rate. Uh, most recently we see that it's almost 25%, 24.7% of African-Americans are impoverished. Okay, so I have a, a little chart here. Um, and we see um, when we talk about poverty, we have to look at children. Okay? Um, and we look at all children um, uh, last year, 19% of children were in poverty. Um, but if you, you know, look at the, the, the uh, racist dynamics of poverty, we see that uh, black children, almost 34% impoverished. Latinos, 30% in poverty. Um, and when we really look at the gendered aspects, the feminized aspects of poverty, we see that mothers, single moms, um, uh, particularly, uh, you know, uh, working class, for women of color are far more likely to be impoverished than their male counterparts. So we see there's a gender dynamic um, as well. So we can't talk about this economic crisis without looking at race and without looking at gender. Okay. Um, you know, when we look at, um, excuse me, I'm going to go back for a minute. You know, there's one other thing that I should point out. Um, when we see about America's increasing racial wealth gap. I wanted to give an example, and so I want to look at the subprime uh, mortgage crisis and kind of the, the racial implications of it. Um, and, and when we look at wealth in general, that in 2008, a typical African American family uh, had only a dime for every dollar of wealth that the typical white family had, um, and only 18% of African Americans and Latinos have retirement accounts compared to 44% of white Americans. So even things like retirement, you know, these are issues that are racialized issues. Okay. Um, but returning to the subprime mortgage crisis, we can see that um, some have argued that this recent economic collapse is the greatest loss of wealth for people of color in modern history. Okay. So while you know, our, our, our news media is being flooded, finally, and, and, and rightly so, uh, issues of race and racism, the structural elements are being not talked about. And this is a structural element. Talk about the economic factors of poverty. Um, and the recession is redrawing class contours of, American, of Ameri uh, America in ways that will leave us more polarized around race than ever before as black and Latino middle classes become systematically eliminated. Okay. Um, so what happened with this loan, uh, this mortgage, subprime mortgage crisis is that after decades of discrimination, African Americans have been turned, turned away 
uh, many Latinos as well were turned away from getting loans. Um, well, what happened was uh, it created a market for bubble crazy lenders like country, Countrywide, uh, with the result that high income black servants is twice as likely to receive a high interest subprime loan than whites. Um, according to the Center for Responsible Lending, Latinos will end up losing between 75 billion and 98 billion in home value wealth from subprime loans, while blacks will lose between 71 and 92 billion. So this is wealth being taken away from newly established uh, middle class communities of color. Um, and we know that if the white middle class was being disproportionately affected at the rates that the, the middle class of color were being affected, this would be all the topic, right? This would be all the news if white Americans um, were losing wealth at extremely high rate rates over African Americans, Latinos, Asian Americans, right? This would be the news, but it's not. There's silence around it. And sometimes when we, when we peel back the facade that racism only exists through an individual perspective, you know, we can identify, clearly identify bigots in society. But when we get past that realm and we see the institutionally embedded structure of racism, that's a whole other topic. And that's a topic that is much less talked about in the open. And that leads us also to the feminization of economic, the economic crisis, which is, again, is another elephant in the room. Okay, we know that women of all races are more likely than their male counterparts to be poor. So we know that gender and gender inequality and sexism plays a role in the economic system. Okay? Um, you know, over half of the almost 40 million Americans living in poverty are women. Okay? And that's why we see so much high rates of poverty among little children because uh, most of these women are uh, single moms or struggling to, to get by. Um, and when we look at the U.S. and we compare it to other countries, we see that America is far behind other industrialized countries in terms of gender equality. Um, the gap in poverty rates between men and women is wider in America than anywhere else in the Western world. Okay? So again, there's a lot of work to be done in issues addressing the entrenchment of race and gender inequality. Um, in 2007, 13.8% of females were poor compared to 11.1% of men. Um, and again, all the data shows um, that also when we look at the combination of racism and sexism, we see that women of color okay, um, experience kind of a, a, a dual form of oppression under the capitalist system. So let's look at some of these numbers. Um, we see here, um, when we look at African American men and women, okay, we see that African American women um, nearly 28% impoverished, while African American men are about 24%. So again, it's the intersections of race and gender inequality, okay, under this, this, this system of capitalist exploitation where we, these things really become apparent. Okay, we look at Latinas, um, we see that they're uh, also more likely than their male counterparts to be impoverished. 23.6% um, of Latinas compared to 19.6% of Latinos. Um, we see this also with Asian American women, with almost 11% of Asian American women are poor compared to 9.7% of Asian men. And we also see this with white folks as well, with 11.6% of white women compared to 9.4% of white men. So, again, to, I keep repeating this, but I think this is one of my take home messages, that we cannot look at the current economic crisis without looking at the, the embeddedness of racism and sexism within the capitalist system. Okay, that these things are not side issues. They're not to be figured out later. They are here and now, and we see that currently with the working class and the ever-expanding gap between the rich and the poor. Um, so, this leads me to my kind of third point. Again, this was, um, a lot of this is inspired from uh, Aaron Reich and Muhammad's work. Um, this idea of recession, okay? Well, I'm gonna argue that uh, for people of color living in the United States, that the recession is over. That for people of color in the United States, we are experiencing a depression. Okay. A depression, that the recession happened between 2001 and 2007 for black America. Okay. Um, that when we look at um, unemployment data, um, we see that um, the rates of unemployment vary substantially depending upon race and ethnic uh, breakdowns. Okay. 